Hi. So, building components that live with your organization. I said this is a story about uh, design systems, components, how those have evolved at Smartly, and how we see the future. Quickly about me. So, I'm Arto Liukkonen. I work as a lead engineer in Stonk's team, and uh, the famous tell me how old you are without telling how old you are, is that I started learning HTML and CSS in 97 by reverse engineering front page uh, output. But yeah, that's all about me, then to the topic and design systems. So those can be measured in a different ways, and one way of doing it is through flexibility in processes and also on what kind of freedom they provide. Two clear examples of the rigid and the flexible design systems are Airbnb and Ted Swatch. Uh, the Airbnb gives you a strict process of how to use the components, while the Swatch allows you to use those and extend those as much as you wish. And there is no right or wrong, but just different use cases. A uh, rigid system is harder to break, and the UIs are usually more consistent. However, some edge cases might not be possible to implement because of the lack of flexibility. On the other hand, having too flexible system can cause chaos and loss of control. And typically, more processes and more strict components you have in the system, the more rigid it, can, it will be considered. And this usually applies to proprietary systems within component, uh, companies. So when we started building the very first version of the Smartly app, we also landed somewhere on that spectrum. Uh, as we had a very small team and we wanted to move fast, we just picked components from here and there, ending up with a scenario with all sorts of components. Even more when we started to switch over from Angular to React, as we didn't directly migrate all the components, but just rewrote those as we needed. And even today, some of the Angular components are still in the application, and you can recognize those from the different styles they have. So in the beginning, we landed on the spectrum somewhere here, way, way over the flexible side. Uh, in general, the development process was very, very flexible. There were no rules, no guidelines how we should build the system. Uh, while this enabled us to build fast, uh, it didn't really scale. So as we moved to React and micro frontend, it became even more crucial to be able to share components. Uh, in 2017, we introduced the first Smartly component which was a button. And slowly we started adding more and more components to the component library. But there were still no unified home for these, and developers were just building and pushing new things whenever needed. So finally, in 2018, we introduced the Smartly UI. Uh, it contained some of the basic components and design tokens like fonts and colors. Uh, there was still no consistency between the components. Some of those were very, very flexible, while others were quite rigid. Uh, however, instead of having components living in their own repos, the Smart UI brought all the components under the same place, making it easier for the developers to discover and also for designers to keep up, with, keep up to date. So in the end, we landed somewhere here with some sort of control. So we weren't anymore a fully flexible system, but we had some, some sort of control. And we saw that it is good on this scale of a product. So in 2019, we finally formed a team to take ownership of the Smartly UI. Uh, in addition to developing the toolkit further, the team also acted as a gatekeeper for feature requests and changes. This, of course, introduced once again more processes to the system and yet again moved us away from the flexible 
to more rigid system. But remember, this is not necessarily a bad thing. There is no better or worse in between of flexible and rigid. So even though we have the processes in place, like gatekeeping the pull requests, we still wanted to keep the processes out of the way as much as possible. Uh, in 2020, we finally unified our Figma UI kit and Smartly UI components, meaning that we could finally make one-to-one -one implementations of the designs. Now, it's good to remember that the component library is not just a collection of visual components. That is only for atomic level components. And then offloading all the other words, work of the integration uh, leads to inefficient development. And this is currently the issue that we are facing at Smartly. Uh, but on the other hand, productizing the components too far is also a mistake that could lead to uh, inefficient flexibility. So what's next? Um, creating a component library that is flexible and accessible is a hard challenge. Basically, there's two different approaches that could be used. Um, we could let the developers handle all the accessibility and integration between the components, or we can bake in the accessibility and the interactions. If we let the developers do the work, uh, this will lead to writing a use case specific code for binding the components, and it rarely fulfills the accessibility standard requirements that, that we might have. Then on the other hand, if we bake in all the functionality, it might lead to monster component with lots and lots of props. For example, the React Select component that you might be familiar of. So we needed something from the middle, picking the best parts from the both worlds. Uh, taking as an example the Smartly dropdown, uh, it is based on the previously mentioned React Select library. Uh, since the internal parts of the components are tightly coupled, it is difficult or even impossible to integrate the component in a slightly different way or in a slightly different uh, use case that we have meant it for. Uh, one example would be providing more thumbnail-focused option list instead of basic text list. And in the end, the select is basically a combination of inputs a popover, and then some visual representation of the options. And optimally, these parts should be modular and interchangeable without rewriting the behavior of the components. So like in the select component case, the valuable reusable logic is not only the dummy component, but also the behavior and the integration of how these parts function together. And instead of hiding the logic in tightly coupled way in one large component, it can be exposed out. And the reusable part here is actually completely invisible, commonly implemented as a hook in React. And this approach is sometimes called as a headless UI. The need for this approach is seen in many organizations and is rapidly increasing practice. This also allows a good balance between ease of use and flexibility. And that is our best guess as well. So in the future, we hope to write as many components as possible with behavioral hooks. So instead of using the select or the React select library in our case, it can be written uh, using decoupled components that communicate with each other's using hooks. Uh, each component has a one thing that it does and takes into account all the accessibility needs that that individual component has. So here is a proof of concept select box functionality written using previously mentioned components and hooks from the combo box and pop over. So first we define the combo box hook that basically uh, handles the selection of the item and the value that user types in the text box. 
Then we have the popover, which is like the container for the results. Then we have the search input. So this is just, just an input, input field that gets the values and all the props from the uh, combo box hook. And then finally, we have the list of items. Now, this may look as a pretty complicated example, like comparing to a React uh, select library, but uh, this provides much more flexibility and small usable components. So the select box is the first thing that we have moved to work with the hooks at Smartly, but we are looking to refactor most of our UI kit to work the same way. The usage of the behavioral hooks will enable the expansion of the components in a way that it gives enough support for the developers, but doesn't allow them to deviate too much from the contract. Uh, components with hooks can have baked in accessibility features like keyboard navigation that works, works consistently in whichever context the component is used. For example, in that select box case, the arrow up and arrow down will walk, walk through the list, and then pressing the return key will select element, as you would expect from a native component. So we believe that the headless UI patterns are a fundamental part of the composable architecture when implementing a flexible component library. And this lets developers to focus on the meaningful parts while also iterating and trying out new UI approaches, utilizing optimal reusability. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And you can find me from Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, everywhere with handle Arteli Ukkonen. Thank you.